Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Please join me for the opening sentences. It was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church. I'm glad that you have joined me this day for an outdoors worship service. I'm coming to you from the lake house of Bob and Debbie Johnston. Thank you to them for allowing me to be in this beautiful outdoor space today as we worship God together. A couple of things I wanna draw your attention to before we begin worship this morning. If you would take a moment to sign the register of friendship that is online so that we can know who's gathered today to worship God. You can find that register of friendship in the link below in the video description or by finding it in the email that came out with this link for this worship service. A couple of things coming up in the near future that I want to keep your attention on. Next Sunday, we will celebrate our rally day, which is a kickoff to our fall programming. This is going to be a drive through event as well as an online event. On Sunday morning between 930 and 1030, you're invited to come by the church and drive through the church parking lot. There you will find snacks and games and information about what's coming up at First Presbyterian Church this fall. Also, you will receive an email with information about every educational opportunity and ministry opportunity taking place uh, at First Presbyterian Church this fall. There will be videos with each of those opportunities and a way for you to sign up to get involved in all the things that are happening at First Pres. Obviously, things are going to look pretty different this fall, but our staff and volunteers have been hard at work figuring out how to do creative, new, and different things that allow us to continue doing the important work of ministry in this time and in this place. So I hope that you will join us for our Rally Day events and activities. After worship is finished this morning, we invite you to scoot over to Zoom and join us for Lemonade on the Lawn. This is an opportunity to gather with other friends and family members of First Presbyterian Church to spend some time in fellowship together after worship is finished. We'll spend time talking for about 10 or 15 minutes and catching up on what's going on in our lives and what's going on in our community. So um, you can find the link for that Zoom meeting also in the video description below or in the email that came out yesterday. Finally, next Sunday after worship, Ken Knight is going to be hosting a hike at Mara Mountain. This will take place at 2 o'clock p.m., and there are instructions for when and where that hike will take place in the bulletin. So please see the bulletin for further information. Now let us prepare our hearts and our minds to worship the Lord our God. The world belongs to God, the earth and all its people. How good it is, how wonderful to live together in unity. Love and faith come together justice and peace join hands. If Christ's disciples keep silent, these stones would shout aloud. Open our lips, O God, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Let us pray together. O sun behind all suns, I give you greeting this new day. Let all creation praise you. Let the daylight and the shadows praise you. Let the fertile earth and the thunder praise you. Let all that breathes praise you, and I shall praise you. O God of all life, I give you greeting this day. Amen. Friends, if we say that we are without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we come before God repenting, truly sorry for the things that we have done or left undone, God promises to be merciful. So let us confess our sins to God and to one another. First in silence, let us pray. Let us also unite our voices confessing together. Before God, with the people of God, we confess to our brokenness. In the ways we wound our lives, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive us, Christ renew us, 
and the Spirit enable us to grow in love. Friends, as far as the East is from the West, so far has God separated us from our sin. God, God's love is abounding and steadfast. God is merciful and God's love never ends. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite our children to pay particular attention as I have a message for those who are young and young at heart. In just a few moments, I'm going to be reading you a story from Paul's letter to the Romans. Paul was an early preacher, and he taught the people that he was preaching to about what it means to be Christians. They were still learning about Christ and learning about being disciples and learning about what it meant to be the people of God. So to them, Paul had a very important message. Paul's message was this. The most important thing that we can do as the people of God is love. In fact, Paul says the only thing that we owe one another is love. The reason that Paul believes this is that Paul understood that God first loved him and that the only thing that God truly wanted from him was to love his neighbors. As we um, gather at this lake space today, I'm reminded of God's love for us. I'm reminded of the ways that God loves us in what God has created. I'm reminded of the ways that God loves us each and every day and the love that we share with one another. So what I want you to, pe to pay attention to, what I want you to be aware of, is the ways that people around you love you and the ways that you love those around you. When you do these things, when you love one another, when you share things with one another, when you care about one another, when you help one another, those are the times when you are doing the things that God wants you to do most. Those are the times that you're sharing God's love. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the love that you give us. We thank you for the gift that we can never fully understand. We ask that you remind us each and every day that we are loved and that you help us love one another. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you.
Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Romans. This is chapter 13, verses 8 through 10. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in these words. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I come to you this Sunday from a very different location. I'm here at the lake at the home of Bob and Debbie Johnston. It is our normal practice as a community of faith to worship God outdoors on Labor Day Sunday. So I have come to you from here. We have often gathered at the YMCA park or the shelter at Mara Mountain. But since we can't do this, to, since we can't do that this year, I have brought you with me to worship God by the lake in this outdoors space. I encourage you to take time today after worship or later this evening to spend some time outdoors. Sit out on your porch, go for a walk around your neighborhood, put on your boots and hike a trail, spend some time outdoors appreciating this wonderful, wonderful creation that God has made. As you do this, I encourage you to engage in another practice, another practice that we do every year. One way or another, as we transition to the beginning of September and the beginning of our program year, Elizabeth or I ask you to think back about the experiences you have had this summer. We invite you to think about the things that you have done, the people that you have met, the places to which you have traveled. Now, this summer has undoubtedly been very different for all of us. Perhaps you have had to do things you'd rather not do. Perhaps you haven't been able to do things you wanted to do. Perhaps your experiences this summer have not been what you expected them to be or what you wanted them to be. But as the Psalms tell us, and as experience reminds us, through all of these things, God has been present. So today, I want you to spend some time thinking about how you have experienced the love of God this summer. In Paul's letter to the Romans, he tells his readers that their most high calling is to love as they have first been loved by God. For Paul, this love is most fully expressed in the love of Christ. The love that God brings into human flesh, the love that reaches out and lifts up the outcast and the sinner the downtrodden and the left out. The love that refuses to relent, even when it means death on a cross. Love that is insistent, demanding, and unstoppable. The heart of the gospel is love. Love is the driving force behind the holy revelation of God. The creation of this amazing world of every plant and every animal, every lake and mountain began out of love. God's love brought forth every good and beautiful thing, every good and beautiful thing that we place our eyes upon in this world around us. All of these things born out of love. In the same way, we also were created out of love. Our bodies were formed from the dust of the earth and God blew love into us and gave us the breath of life. Love sustains us in hard times. Love liberates us from bondage and slavery. Love saves us from the chains of evil, from the wilderness of sin, even from ourselves. Knowing this, where have you seen God's love at work this summer? Where have you seen God's love working through another person? Where have you felt God's love compelling you to care for one another? Where have you seen God's love at work? I want you to take a few moments 
to think about this question. I'm going to give you some time. I want you to actually share your thoughts with another person. If you're in a group of people watching worship this morning, share with one another. If you're watching alone, post your thoughts in the live chat on this video. If the words live chat mean nothing to you, call a friend or a family member and share your thoughts with them. Find a way to share with another person how you have witnessed God's love. I know the place that I have witnessed God's love this summer has been in the members of First Presbyterian Church. I have witnessed your love at work in the way you have cared for one another. I've witnessed your love at work in the ways that you've been willing to do new and different and creative things in spite of the difficulties they present. I've witnessed your love in kind notes and caring words shared over phone calls. Especially, I've witnessed your love and the way that you have showered Elizabeth with your thanks and your praise for her years of service at First Presbyterian Church Albemarle. Your testament to her ministry in this place and her kind and compassionate shows of affection for you all have shown me how deeply God's love can spread into a community of faith. So where have you seen God's love at work? In what moments have you witnessed the power of that love shared with another person? Friends, God's love is abundant. It is ever present in ways we recognize and in ways that we do not. And Paul tells us, having received God's love, we have a responsibility and we have a debt that we owe. That responsibility is one of offering love to another of increasing the amount of love that is out there in the world. We know that this is what the world needs. We see pain in the world around us. We see trial and suffering and heartache in the world around us. People injured by violence and prejudice and racism. Hundreds of thousands of people who are suffering from sickness. Millions who have lost loved ones. A nation divided by fear, ignorance, and mistrust. Families and neighbors separated needlessly. Along with all the other things it needs, our world needs an increase in love. It is our responsibility as the people of God to bring about more of that love. The debt that we owe to those around us is that of offering love. As we move into this fall, as we begin our program year, and as we look to an uncertain future, our greatest calling, our most important calling is to love. May we live up to that calling. Let us pray. God, we offer you all thanks and praise for the many gifts that you have given us the many ways that you have shown your love manifest in the world around us. Lord, we ask that you would be with your creation this day. Be with this planet that you have created. Sustain it, renew it, and strengthen it. Turn our hearts and our minds to the things that we can do to keep this planet healthy and whole. God, we pray for those who are sick and grieving this day. We pray for those who suffer, from the effects of coronavirus. 
We pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for those who feel pressure due to the anxiety created by this coronavirus. We ask that you would strengthen all of us and give us resilience in the face of this time of trial. God, as we move into a new season, we ask that you accompany us. We ask that you would remind us of your presence and your power at work in our lives at all times. Comfort and strengthen us for the journey that you have laid out in front of us and walk beside us as we embark upon that journey. Lord, we ask that you would hear our voices as we unite them, praying together the ecumenical prayer that you have taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends, we have received so much from the hand of a generous God. We have received blessings upon blessings, and it is our calling to use that which we have received to strengthen the world around us. Knowing this, let us take time to offer of our lives and our gifts to the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious and generous God, we offer you thanks for all that you have done for us and continue to do for us. We offer our, to you our gifts, and we ask simply that you would use them to make this world a better place. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Friends, my charge to you is this. Go out from this place today, strengthened by the knowledge that you have been first loved and encouraged to be about the work of loving another. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us and all people now and forever. Amen.